Oh, flood lane, it took him lane. Kind of like the flood that Ty Lu just put down upon Tainted Minds. If you're just joining us, we're live here from the Twickenham Stadium in the beautiful city of London, or I guess just on the outskirts here for the Face It Asian Miners going into the Face It Major 2018. My name is Trey Sarantis, and I am your desk host. As we coast right into this first elimination game of the day, it's going to be a best of three bout, and I, for one, can't wait to get this bad boy started alongside of my colleagues here in Sponge and Bleh. Guys, we are teed up for five power versus unique stars, and it it's got a chance to be explosive, or it's got a chance to be an absolute mess. It could be a three-mapper. I think there's a chance it could be a three-mapper like the game we had yesterday in the lower bracket, Vici and uh, uh, I've forgotten who they were playing. How did I do that already? <laughs> <laughs> Time flies. It, when you're having fun, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. B boot. That's right, Vici yes. versus Boot. I think it's going to be 2-0, though. I'll tell you why. Okay, tell me why. I'll tell you why. Because, uh... Tell me why. Jesus. Ain't nothing. No, no, no. <sighs> All right, Bled. This is your opportunity <laughs> to kind of silence Chad <laughs> in the moment. And I would like you to seize this opportunity and take it away. All right. Uh, I th uh, the reason why I think it's going to be 2-0 uh, is because Unix are just look like a better team, right? Where even, okay. though, even though they were playing against Tainted Minds. Yeah, this... Ignoring how Tainted Minds and Tyloo played those first two maps, let's mm -hmm. look at how Unique Stars and Fire Power played. Fire Power didn't show anything crazy, right? It was just like some good aim coming in, a couple of rounds where you know they had a couple of executes, whatnot. That's about it. But if you look at Unique Stars, the composure they had yeah. when they're playing those T sides, they were playing against. I think Tainted, I think Tainted Minds actually played a better, uh, better CS than Tyloo did on their uh, on their respective opening maps. So I personally feel like Unique Stars they have the uh, plus. One stand in versus three stand ins. I think that, yeah, that's it. That's the factor. That's a factor. That, that's a huge factor. Screw everything else. Because, that's it. yet again, if you don't have a game plan under wraps, well, then your opponent's never going to guess exactly how your game plan goes. Let's begin the discussion on five power, a team that caught an L earlier, 16 to 11, against Ty Lu on Inferno. Not really how you want to start your day going through the lower bracket, but there is still redemption. There's still a chance for vindication as they battle their way here. I guess as we build the point about five power, we need to mention that they did qualify through the, the Southeast Asian. Quadrant? Qu yes. Qualifier. Yes. Quadrant. Yeah. Qu yeah, that's where they came. <laughs> quadrant. Through. Quadrant. All right. All right. But they have three stand-ins because of visa issues, yes. right? So the fact of the matter is they have uh, Kaze. I believe that's how you say it. Kaze. Yeah. Kaze. Japanese it, for wind. It, the more it, you know. We would just say Kaze. But uh, he's, well. he's playing. He is an AWP player from Malaysia. I played against him back in the day. MVP Carnell, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, then we have the likes of QKA. I don't know if I'm saying that Kuka. correctly. QK. Yeah. Uh, and then the other stand-in was Moxie, who used to play for Boot uh, some time ago. Now, these, these guys have come together, and we did see some star potential or some individual prowess, and then good fundamentals of just going to bomb sites and trading out as they played the opening game of the day. But the most important, uh, important point here is the fact they're called Five Power, and that seems like a similar name to a band that I may have listened to growing up probably in the late 90s or early noughties, and then Hanson comes hold to on, mind. Hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up the early what? Noughties. No, zero, 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 noughties, the noughties. Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, nope. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to try to fit that one into this segment somehow. You were like a mute button. Uh, yeah, there actually probably just is. hit that, that red, red button. button. Oh, yeah. all right. They say don't touch the red button, but in this case, it's probably better. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> five power having these stand-ins. Uh, earlier, you know, it was kind of, a, I don't want to say a bloodbath, but there was something there to show for the I, I just had the best idea. No. Okay. What if we don't call them stand-ins? What if we call them... Substitutes. Standouts. Okay. Well, that was well, it for Chad. Uh, <laughs> we enjoyed having him on the desk. <laughs> this is his last segment. We're going to be making an executive call to get him out of you here. You know, funny. the funny thing is, I think uh, <laughs> the team with the stand-ins is better than the original team, and I'll tell you why. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Uh, everyone on this team can speak or at least understand Chinese to a pretty high level. Okay, the and that wasn't the case before? No, because they had two Mongolians and a Thai player oh. who, and they're, I've heard their comms, they can understand Chinese, but there was always a huge mixture of English. And this one, they can actually call in Chinese properly. So, and in my books, comms is, uh, you know, numero uno when it comes to counter Pretty important, yeah. So, I don't know, man. This could be pretty, uh, there, pretty interesting. There's place. something super special mm -hmm. about this next team. So special that they're even named the Unique Stars. They're even just so unique in the point that they come from Israel. And obviously, we've, we talked about the, uh, the region earlier. Indeed. Or as, as Chad would say, the quadrant earlier that they come from. Uh, the sector. But them going into this matchup, 
We're expecting them to have a little bit of that explosiveness, having something to show for themselves. They did really well in their decision making. That's one of the things. When we got down to scrappy three v three situations, or even like situations where they had saved weapons, mm -hmm. they would play off each other fantastically, and that's something definitely to be noted because that is normally the harder thing, right? To make yeah. those decisions, it's it's easy to get a default. It's easy to have a set execute. Anybody can do that just by having a conversation and setting your positions. The harder thing is to play off your players and have the individuals understand how to work in scenarios that are unfolding because those are endless, those are infinite. You can never really quantify how a round is going to play out, but if you have the right reactions, you have the right protocols in place, uh, good decision-making, and a, a loud and boisterous in-game leader who can tell you what you need to do and when, that's half the battle done. And also the thing is, uh, this might sound supremely simplistic, it might even sound stupid, but here's the thing. With the stand-in in place and the way they're playing the Inferno CD side, they had a couple of good, nice rounds yeah. overall, but they did struggle a bit, let's be honest about it. The T side is where they're really shown, and they had some pretty good pretty good comps going, very a lot of composure. I like to here, I think, for for unique stars, the map pick is going to be very crucial here, right? I wouldn't want to see a map where the CD side can kind of go for a steamroll thing, like a, like a nuke or a train, for example. I would like to play a little bit more open maps where Inferno, it's not exactly CD side. The map can go either way, depending on how you play the map. Then you have Cash, for example, you have Mirage, you have Dust2. I think having these maps in the uh, amongst the maps which are going to be picked coming up soon, uh, I think that's going to favor them more than, let's say, a nuke coming in or a train coming in. Now, why, the reason I say this is because Five Power, they don't really play the more tactical maps. Of like course, a, like it wouldn't make sense. Train, yeah. right? So just looking at the way the map's going to play out, I think this might actually favor Unique Stars. Setting aside, setting aside the the stand and component as well. From a, from a veto standpoint, they yeah. are definitely favored because when you bring in three new players, you're only going to look to play maps where the fundamentals are the only thing that matters or one of the key components like a yeah. Mirage, like a Cache, like a Dust 2. But these unique stars have a few more options to go with here and that's why they should be in control of this matchup. Plus, I don't want to say that they were absolutely fired the fork up earlier. They were ready They're to excited. go. Yeah. The coach was involved. Everybody's just real animate and you could just feel the sort of the, the vibe around them. Even watching them on your stream, at home. I, 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 I was just walking uh, backstage, just going to over to the uh, to the bathroom, and I saw the two teams. There was a five power around in one corner. Were they fighting? No, they weren't fighting. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a, it was no, a gang not, fight. It's, it's Australia. It's not Australia. <laughs> yeah. But the five power guys are like you, we saw them in backstage, just in the green room. They're mm -hmm. like relaxed, smiling, laughing, talking to each other. The Unique Star guys are pumped up. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we're going to go in there. We're going to go in there, you know? And uh, that's a good sign. This is the Super Bowl, though, for these guys, right? And it should be for all of these teams in yeah. a lot of way, unless you're the likes of Tyler and Renegades, who if this should be just another day at the office. Obviously, to qualify for a major is the biggest thing. It's the most prestigious thing in Counter-Strike, but they already know that their level's above these squads. For lack of Unique Stars, obviously, it's a little bit different for Five Power because they are just a mixed team coming together to do the best they can in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. But for Unique Stars, this is a chance to prove that that region, that uh, quadrant, you know, knows how to play Counter Strike, and like I said, they're Super Bowl. That's a a toy, a, a toy. That's a, a term coined by Lurpus. I was saying, to, I was mixing Tommy and term, and we got, we got that toy. We got toy. But we also have a head-to-head -head that's not necessarily. Uh, I guess we do have some toy for that. I don't know. I feel like I'm getting some sort of weird accent. I've been you hanging around twang. Sponge way too much. But anyway, let's take a look at our head-to-head -head and see the two players in the Anarchies two and Ks. That we're going to talk about here because both these players could have the potential to have a huge impact. Uh, and obviously, if you the stats, I mean, we could look at the maps played. It's not, I, I you know, the relevance of the stats at this point <laughs> are kind yeah. of, uh, yikes. Yeah, yeah, yikes. Okay, uh, the two offers, that's one thing. That yeah, we can look right at there. that. Yeah, we can look at that. Anurk has actually played, uh, he wasn't a part of this team earlier. They played the uh, the the Asian, the Middle East qualifiers. Okay. And they actually qualified, and they're like, oh, all right. Yeah, and we, they never had an offer till then. So he was, so he got, he's in. Up. He's in now, and he's the main AWP guy, Tractman. That's a pretty cool name. Sounds almost like a comic book name, by the way. And then we have Kaze Andrew Kong. He was a star player in uh, in in Flash Gaming when he was playing yep. alongside Fancy slash Summer. I refuse to call him Summer. Uh, and all these guys. And he's been a star player, right? We saw him. He was hitting some really nice best, shots. And best Malaysian player, I would say. Best Malaysian player yeah. to come out in CS:GO. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that on that. So. It's going to be, and also, if it's going to go down to maps we're going to think it's going to go down mm. to, like a Mirage, like a Dust2, like those open maps and all that, these two players, they could uh, they could do some damage. They're going to be instrumental to see who, which team is going to come on through. But, again, earlier they were facing off in a BO1, so now it's going to be a best of three. Are they going to have, uh, it, it, it kind of changes the entire parameters of the thing, of right? Yeah. Because you might do it on one map, but then again, you might also get a bad pick in the in the ban and the veto process, where in which you're kind of left uh, in the bad foot. It is a bit of a mystery in the sense of 
when you're unique stars, it's like, well, we have no idea what they consider their best map because they technically don't have a best map. And five power as well. Unique stars really don't have that many games on HLTV yeah. either. So there's not a huge database to look into here when you're prepping for this. So safe. when you have these scenarios go down, that's why we're saying that it's probably more likely that five power will just go for safe picks, mm -hmm. whereas unique stars can pull anything, a map that they're confident on, a map that they practice a lot on, and that can surprise and be not an upset factor because both teams here are extremely unknown. Mm -hmm. But they can yeah. they can pull out. It's a trump card in a lot of ways. A so trump card. You, you can immediately see like the uh, the more tactical maps gone, getting taken up. Gone. It's like this is going to be a firefight, boys. Let's see how it goes. So overpass out of the picture. You got a picture. Go. So train, train. This is surprising. That's the next, I guess, in the list being tactical maps. You have that and Inferno probably on relative par for the remainder of the maps here. So this is where I'm going to expect five power to go with. Okay, I was going to say either Mirage or Akash, maybe even a Dust Two in the mix, but Mirage would be one that's more played. This is where I think it's 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 much easier for individuals to take over because everybody can can react in the mid rounds. Yeah, and also if you look at Train, right? Look, it's a map where yeah, you like it's a tactical map and whatnot. But here's the thing: if uh, and, and there's Stand, and I forgot his name. He actually did a pretty pumped. Yeah, he did a pretty decent job. Now, if you put him in a good spot. If he put him in a good spot to play in on train, the rest yeah. of the team, they know what, what they're going to do, right? right so this could actually really work out. If they get a huge lead on the CT side, they could pretty much stomp them. What I'm surprised about is the fact that uh, Five Power banned out Cash and taking Inferno. It's almost like both these teams are like, yeah, our Inferno's not that bad. I guess they were happy with their earlier performances, maybe. They both thought that they put we up a decent showing. We got 11 rounds against uh, Ty Lue. Yeah. Let's go, yeah. Well, they were able to trade off each other very well. That was one of those things which I thought was, was a positive, that they played as a pack and traded and took over bomb sites and uh, that kind of scenario, Trace. Yes, the scenarios that we're trying to paint here, the pictures that we're trying to paint, and ultimately, I need to ask you guys again, who do you got? Three, two, one. Unique sauce. He can't count. Okay. Sorry, I know it's it's a little difficult. Uh, yeah, I think Unique Stars have a unique story, and it would be surely cool to see them go forward on in this bracket. Now, with that being said, I'm not going to call him Jan. I'm not going to call him Dan and James, but I'm going to call him the iconic Face It casting duo that you've grown to love and learned to like over the years. Dames. Dames. <laughs> Maybe you should turn your microphone learned to, on. Learn to we like. Go. What does that mean? Learned to like. And that means that I suggest that they were without choice. You're on a, you are on a quiet taste then. What about you? <laughs> I taste delicious. What can I say? Train is going to be the first map of this best of three, and it looks like Five Power will be starting on the CT side. I've, I, I think it's hard not to pick unique stars for this, all things considered. Dan, where do you stand or sit? Oh, it's, I don't know. I mean, the, the Five Power played really well on Inferno with, with the stand-in, so that kind of made, threw me for a loop a little bit. Obviously, Tiny made some mistakes and did give them opportunities, but they, they had a good sort of, they had a good counter-strike. They weren't just playing like super puggy and it kind of was a good look, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll let the action do the talking for us as we are into the first round of this best of three. Shall Sage on the B site, Senna Reggie Insanity with the push. He will die. He will die as Infernal will take over at PopDog very quickly. And this poses a huge problem because Unique Stars can rotate to B really quickly from this position if they want to sort of fake out their opponents. Oh, that's a great pick. Kuka has uh, got some problems here. He is surrounded if he tries to exit the situation. And he has to get picked off, but now Kuka and Kays are on their own. Nurse has got the, the wide angle in the hell position. He can allow his teammates to engage first or engage first himself. Kuka on the site. Right, it does not look good for five power. There's one shot. 20 HP for Kuka. One more to frag to find. Looking for the defuse kit. There it is. What's he doing? Back and forth he goes. Oh, Infernal. Doesn't need to peek. Let him touch the bomb. Let him stand on the bomb. Nice. Right, so, I d yeah, definitely the poker, poker player in me. I'm s I just, I just see the, I see a good hand. <laughs> I see a good hand there. Um, but uh, Q yeah, Kuka, I'll uh, adjust. What game do you play with three cards, Dan? Well, I only play. Is there something Solden, you want to tell but, us? But uh, I just That's see two cards. Yeah, I know, but when I see capital QKA, I'm just thinking about poker there. Let's see if they can. Oh, nice. There you go. Nice. The barrage of HEs purchased, invested it. Light investment, not going for the full force buy. Just a small 
A little bit of utility use, and they've done huge damage. They got a kill. They got. Uh, they've taken chunks out of Pont and Infernal, and they've gotten an additional kill too. Shall Sage will pick himself up an AK. He's got a Molotov. He's definitely got options to get an additional kill out here, and he's going to be racing back to that B side as he sees the rotation coming in. Can Shall Sage get some more damage in? And one more kill would already be fantastic, considering the lack of investment. They're going to have a strong first buy, which is really encouraging, unless they buy up next round, which I really hope is not the case. But South Sage actually has the helmet and Kevlar. My goodness, he can he can do some damage. Oh, shot straight in the face. And that will be 2-0 for Unique Stars. So far, so good for Unique Stars. USP round. To come for five power, the P250 will be collected here and there. Infernal off to a good start with five kills. Train will be an interesting map. I think train will be um, T side of train will be a good indicator as to where Unique Stars might be as a team. So I look forward to seeing the buy rounds in terms of timing and so on. Not an easy map to deal with. Yeah, we know to look out for Nerds. So far, he had a really good performance earlier. And Ponks played pretty well too. I like to see the play on Inferno. So it's a very fast take of the outside bomb train, and there's not too too much they can do. Kaze will try his luck with the P250, and he will strike. True, that's very nice. Nurse Doesn't win a prize a, though. Nerds needs a gun called D's Nerds. D's Nerds, like his AK or something. I'm a genius. They they are doing a lot of damage for very little investment. This is beautiful for 5 power. Oh my god, Kazi gets even more damage with that P250. How many players are they, they going to kill? No, it's going to walk into insanity. He will be eliminated, but Kazi is looking for additional weaponry. Can he find something else? No, but he will take a Mag-10, which they will promptly discard, I should think. Indeed. Upgrade the Mac 10, turn it into craft. You use the Mac 10 to craft an AWP. Or you could two. use a Mac 10 in the um, in the pop dog position, although you may prefer better weapons if you have to rotate. Mac 10 will be less than desirable, and it is it is an unnecessary risk for a CT side and five power certainly have intentions with these two AWPs. Hello. Oh my God, that was a very late timing <laughs> and a very fast one from Unique Stars. Kazi and Kuka will be able to get a couple kills as the T's make their way in. They cannot do anything against these AWPs. Kaze will get another one. Nertz has been eliminated. Now it's Anarkez trying to get some additional damage for his team, but they will get shut down. Fight power. Despite losing the first three rounds, they made every round painful for Unique Stars. And Unique Stars can't really buy in this round. I mean, they can do a half buy of, of sorts, but AK is picked up. But uh, oh, they're, are they forcing it up? Yes, they are. Okay. That was a surprising turnaround after the pop dog engagement. Unique stars, they have some grenades here. Yeah, Kaze all over the shop with the AWP. We are into the game. So can we get into the game, please? Yeah, we're like 20 seconds into the game, guys. <laughs> Three rifles and two pistols for Unique stars. Kaze has pushed through the IV position. He won't see anything. And this may send players towards the B-bomb site. That is where Unique Stars are headed ever so slowly but surely. There's a trade with the P250. Insanity wants to deploy his grenade, but the second guessing... Oh, oh Infernal's gone straight past him. Hasn't even checked a very common position. And he won't get any frags out of that. Spex now on his own. One versus two, however. He's in CT spawn, but the bomb... Oh, it's a side plant. This could be... Oh, unique stars, man. They got the tricks. Spex. Coming in from the back. Are they checking for this? They must be, surely, at this point. He spots the tease. The smoke goes down. Long range spray. Oh, God, he can't quite find it. Oh, that sucks for Spex. It was a great opportunity, but it has gone amiss. And what the hell was going on there on, around the bomb train? Both the CT and the T not checking the first spot you check for both players. <laughs> but like a T is supposed to check that spot and the CT is supposed to expect to get 
pushed from that position. That's really crazy. Neither yeah. of them looked. That's so I guess weird. I they assumed it was one, one player on the site and everybody else rotating. Yeah, the spray in the smoke is tough because they could be on either side of where where you think the bomb is. So the taps and bursts may be more prudent. It's unfortunate for Unique Stars. It was a nice idea, and you could see they force bought with intention. But now they are on the pistols, and it's time for Five Power to make that cash. E even in the rounds that Five Power have lost, they looked like they were winning. And so it, it, in my head, it's almost like a 5-0 right now. Obviously, it's not. It's just the fact that they had very, very little investment, but were still like getting loads of kills every single round. It looks like they always had presence, and that's really cool because, you know, it, it feels really good when you feel like every round you're able to do stuff. You're able to accomplish things. You're getting kills, even if you have a USP. You're picking up a kill. You're making. You're creating problems. You're having presence. You're in the game, and because it, it can be kind of demoralizing sometimes when you get shut out, and then oh, you know, you have to have two saves and you can't do anything with the saves. But uh, five power every single round, they've uh, gotten loads of damage on their opponents, and the double ops worked out really well. Because as you said, there was a really weird situation when they unique stars pushed out really fast and in instantly killed the pop dog player, but they still managed to crush the round. Five power. Cause they not hitting the mark on that occasion. It looks like he wants to go back. If I remember correctly, he was really aggressive on Inferno. And he was not shy for the repeaks, and he'll continue to do so. This is a really tough repeak. Scoped in already. And uh, Unique starts have the numbers. And I don't know how much of that Kazakh was even able to see. Almost a full rotation from the CTs, re re relying on uh, Shao Sage to hold down the rotation. And he will delay players for the time being. Unique starts have no map control beyond the showers area. Still spreading out above B. Now as time ticks on, the five power may have to spread back towards A, and indeed they're doing that. Moxie having a look towards Ivy. Two smokes left on the T's now at this point. Kuka watching Insanity's back. Insanity has his back to that upper position, just focusing on the slope. And there are flashbang smokes, and I'm all the to be deployed here for the T's. Looks like they have every intention of pushing into this B bomb site. Insanity. It's going to be the first point of contact here. We'll get flashed. Oh, they don't actually kill him immediately. There is a slight delay, but they'll get the job done. Nice catch there from Kuka. He's got players, though, advancing very quickly on the high ground, which he didn't spot. And now that's a big problem. A 1v3 here for 5 power. How much can Moxie get out of this? Some, like another couple kills would be so useful. Moving forwards. Oh, that's really clean onto Pumps. The AWP, though, that's going to be the problem. Are they set up correctly? Yes, they are. And that will be the round for Unique Stars. What are the implications for the CT money? Ooh, it's an interesting. Three players of the five can buy for five power. They could put somebody, if they bought, they could put somebody in the... If they go for a fast pop dog play with a CZ, for example, that could be enough. The fast fire rate, hold the angle so you shoot people straight in the head in the positions where they usually go down. Let's see what I choose to... Ooh, they've gone all, all, all the way all in. With the double AWPs. Nobody in the pop dog position. So if you make a fast play as a T towards main, you can see if the CTs make a play towards pop or not. So you can get in there quickly. Of course, that has its own risks. CT's not out of this round just yet. Two smoke grenades up a B, just dissipating now. Infernal walking up the IV position with only three five power players remaining. Insanity at Old Bomb, Moxie and CT spawn. Although I think Infernal should have some sound cues from an Insanity repositioning. So very quiet right now. It's down to the T's to get position and the CT's feel quite comfortable. Uh, comfortable with theirs. Insanity blocked off by a smoke. Still undiscovered. They don't know that he's there. 100%. Throw some more nades though. They'll push into the bomb sites. Oh! Shell Sage. Actually getting what he wants there. There's good control for Unique Stars to plant the bomb with players towards Ivy and Pop. Moxie at the back, rotating towards Connector. Will insanity be expected? Moxie's gone away towards B, which is 
confusing, but he's back and Insanity has spotted one of these players, but will he be re will he be ready for Infernal? This is going to catch him completely off guard, but Infernal jumps the gun there, misses the shot entirely, and that leaves Anakes in a really awkward spot. Now he's waiting for the cross, as you can see, but he will see it he will hear Insanity closing the distance, but that bomb is very, very sick, so he can dance around. Nobody on the bomb. He hears the AWP. Tries to... Ooh, he maybe would have caught him saving. But it will be another round in the bag for Unique Stars. Got to be careful. I was about <laughs> to say, like, he's just acting yeah, like... Yeah, that's very careless of him. Yeah. That's, that he knows the guy's really around weird. Ivy, so he's... Yeah, I think... Mm, maybe he, he's covered from that position. I we'll don't see. know. <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think he... He's, he's covered. Yeah, he's just about covered. Looks worse than it was. Hmm. Either way, it is going to be 5-3. The AWP has been saved, of course, but a quick push into the B sites is the medicine that Unique Stars need in this round. So a nice ding coming in onto Pongt with that USP. Oh, my God. P250. Let's go. Q Kurt does excellent amounts of damage. Will get sprayed from the high position. Nurts is on the case. Specs will go down to Pop Dog. And that's a big problem because that's a gun collected on the flank now. An AWP in play on Moxie as well. So if they continue to push towards the connector position, they may just get taken down in an untradeable fashion. And Anakis. they'll back away for the side plant. I was going to say, Anakis needs to get that bomb down because he is on the same channel as Nurts who can look ahead of him. And now the bomb is down. There was a pop flash play attempted by the Tease, but Nurts was the one who ate the flash. And now Nurts is alone. He's got the sound cues. You can see him moving around. He has to get off this channel. Ooh, there oh, oh my god. Nice. What in the blazes? That what is a not a round that Unique Stars were supposed to lose at all. What a round. Big plays from Kuka with that P250. Opening up the the rounds very nicely for five power. That is quite the win. Credit and flash from his teammate though. It as well. Crushes the economy of Unique Stars. And five power, they're going to be able to get the orbs. Obviously, they save two guns there, and they're going to have some money left over. So that's that's beautiful for them. That's absolutely the best way to get back into a game. Win a save rounds. That solitary AWP. We we talk about it. It's dangerous, and it works out for five power. Quick B explosion, but Kuka spotted it. He's going in for more against the pistols. He's absolutely crazy. Giving up the AWP now to the C to the T's. Good damage, though. This is still a tough spot for Unique Stars. The bomb plant would be a bonus. Just about goes down there. I think Kuka maybe thought he was at the point of no return and his teammates would clean up. There are mollies and smokes here. And HE grenades for the CT side. Ooh, perhaps he can connect the rifle. He's got he's got he's got oh my. What is happening? They must know he's in the smoke though, so surely he is doomed. He is indeed. And there is the round. <laughs> that was fun though. That was interesting. Um, so is it Shao Sage? Would it be Shao Sage instead of Shao Sage? Don't know. Because it's, Ka it's Kaze. Is it? Yeah. That's what they said on the, on the desk at least. Which would make sense to be honest. I don't know. We need to go and ask. But you're saying it in Japanese. The Chinese. I, I don't know how I'm saying it. I'm just saying it. How they said on the desk. Until I hear otherwise, um, I'm going to say Shao Sage. It's really hard to know with uh, some of the Asian languages. But uh, Japanese is, is simple enough, though. That, that I'd be confident with. But Moxie, you'll start things off pretty effectively. Takes down Ponked. Insanity with a nice forward position. It's nice to do this every so often. And it does seem like the T's likely won't suspect this. Oh, okay. Nicely done. Infernal will check it. Good spray through from Nurts, clearing out the bomb train. Oh, the leg shot from Moxie. That is quite disappointing for him. But not for Nurts. He's had quite the round there. A trio of kills. Shao Sage was one. More to go, though. Oh, that nade will be big. That is Nurse absolutely dead. But no more first shells, Sage. Goodbye, my friends. They 
They could buy, actually. The Kuka could get an orb and Kevlar. Yeah, they're going to do it. This is beautiful from Nuts. It's a lovely trio of kills. Nice. Five power. They've got some smokes. They've got the AWP on Kuka. Specs ponked. And then it goes towards the B bomb site. There are some interesting angles um, looking from behind the showers towards the back of B where Specs is now in terms of AWP jewels. I won't offer to explain them to you, but just look out for them in different matches. Now Kiko over towards B as well. Shao Sage wins his battle. Ponks will remain in the upper area, waiting for another peak. Kaze's gone for those aggressive peaks before, so you never know. Kaze, though, is over towards the IV position, and he doesn't have his sniper rifle. Three players coming to IV, so he may have some action soon. The second player has the bomb, so we have to keep an eye on what is seen and what is unseen. Look at the timing. Moves away at the wrong time. Ponks is offering a fake towards the B bomb site, and it's almost a full rotation. Insanity and Kaze now very out of position, and they will loudly move back. And it's going to be a nasty surprise for Kaze. Not sure if he saw the bomb in a death camp. Now, Popdog is a problem for the T's as they try to get this bomb down, as well as Kuka being on the site itself. They've got 20 seconds to move into A. All yeah. rotate to B. Ponks is in the middle of B. Yeah, that's probably the biggest problem, that time issue. Tanity's watching for the bomber, and the bomber's hit the ground again. And that's that. Ponks will come in on the flank, but he is way too late for this one. That bunch of NIP stickers. <laughs> Perhaps they felt there was no time to wrap towards the B bomb site. I mean, it could have been people in CT spawn as well. So common enough position, especially when you take Ivy f almost for free. Well, when you take it for free, but there was a rotation in that round. But we see, um, again, with, with stand-ins, of course, it's going to be harder not to over-rotate, as we saw in part of that round. But now Unique Stars are on the pistols. Six rounds on the board on the T side. Who do you think this favours at the moment? I don't know, mate. <laughs> it's very hard with these two teams. Five power have impressed me, though. Uh, just they're playing really well with the stand-ins, and to have three stand-ins is no small task to overcome. And, and they're playing really well. Um, obviously, there is some firepower on the team, which is what we've seen. So I'm kind of like, you know, there's a small part of me that's kind of rooting for the fact that they're trying to play, you know, really proper Counter-Strike in a in a hard condition. And here comes a quick burst from Unique Stars. You will. They sh I wonder if they'll be able to get the bomb down here. There is a st pretty strong possibility. There's no incendiary from the CTs to deny it. So, indeed, it's going to go down and still do some damage before they finally fall. There's another plague down. Oh, this is a very timely push from Ponked. Or maybe not. Insanity, insanity ready for that one. And seven rounds for five power. So, really, really close on the scoreline. I think that uh, five power are probably going to have some difficulty on the T side of train. Because how do you play T side of train effectively with uh, a bunch of stand-ins? I mean, you can decide who throws what smoke grenade, for example, into the A site. But if Unique Stars take an aggressive response towards those smokes, then I can't imagine five power will be able to will deal with such things. So in that sense, I think five power need the nine six pretty badly. And it will be an uphill struggle from there if they don't win the pistol. <clears throat> so I think it's um, Unique Stars may have the power, although they don't have the guns in this particular round. So five power, th the line six will be a very good look for them if they can make it there. Yeah. Yeah, it, d it does seem that way. And I don't know. I, I have a good feeling about five power somehow. Liking what I've been seeing from them so far. Infernal looking to get some a little, just a tiny bit of damage on there. Just one more frag. Denied with the USP. Tiny bit of damage. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not a lot. Just one kill. 
Good money for Unique Stars going into the final round. Orp is an option if they want it. Double ops for five power. The double ops have worked out really well for them. We've yet to see anything too catastrophic from that perspective. They've uh, been performing pretty well. Unique Stars taking a timeout in the very last round of the first half to work out what they want to do here. Interestingly, Nurse will be on a Galil, so he can have full nades. Which I do find kind of interesting because um, I think it was Ponk who had 6k in the bank. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't do the, the math when they had all the money. But I, f I felt like they could have had a better buy somehow, but I guess not. So, Galil 4AKs it is. Full nades and looking to go for some very fast outside pressure. But it's a great start here for 5 power. Ponked will trade the kill onto Moxie. There are three smokes down in the middle of the site. This will be A with smokes for the last round. Shao Sage trying to do what he can around those smokes. And Shpex will be protected by the train structure. And there is the CT taken oh. out. Kuka now has much to do. Misses his flick. He has Kaze as well. Two AWPs. The jump peak is not punished. These players are low, but these flicks are not really hitting the mark here for 5 power. And now Kuka is alone. Absolute carnage and things start to slow down as Unique Stars run out of grenades. Both low, but it is inconsequential at this point. One spotted on the high ground. No need to keep peeking though. That HE should be good. Oh, not quite. One HP. Oh, that is robbery. He deserved that one. And there is another round for Unique Stars. Anik is leading the charge 17 for 11. But Kuka was the man for the CTs, 18 for 11. And now the teams will switch sides. I do wonder what we can expect from 5 power. I do think the 9-6 was sorely needed. They got the 8-7. So the um, pistol round isn't quite the death sentence it might otherwise be. Yeah, again, uh, considering that 5 Power lost the pistol on the first half, it is impressive. I agree that they have been doing quite well. And Unique Stars, I wonder how their defense will look. 5 Power, I would expect a lot of A pushes, like fast A rounds, fast A rounds with smokes, because I would be surprised if the 5 Power players do not know the smokes outside. That is sometimes the question, though, when you have a team like this, the ragtag group that has been assembled last minute that perhaps there's going to be players that won't know smokes that they might need to know. Well, hopefully they will check that in advance of the map starting. Yep. Four players in the A bomb site for unique stars with these pistols. The smoke grenade down towards Ivy. Will they go through the smoke? No, they're going to go towards the site instead. CZ is out, but unique stars... Making it look easy. Three players, in, oh, those two players will get the cheap upgrade for the helmet. Ponk and Nerts. And that will allow the rifles to come out for both those players. Yeah, so the. It'd be cool to see a Moxie, PT50, Kevlar, and some nades. Because he would be the only person that could get everything. Um, but he goes for the Scouts instead, which is also a fine choice. If he can get the shots to connect. And uh, Kuko just goes straight out there, trying to get something with a deagle. He's denied. Can 5 power make this competitive despite losing both pistols? Ooh, opportunity. Santi will push forwards. Has attracted the attention of Anarchez as well. That's such a smart peek from Spex, though. While he's re re uh, reloading, he has a quick look to see if anybody's there trying to close the distance as is he's reloading. So, Unique Stars, they have the spatial awareness, and that's really awesome to see. Moxie going for some pot shots, the only man making noise really on the five power team at the moment. And the question for Unique Stars is, where are the other three players? What are they trying to do? CTs are aware that they do not really have to do anything. It's the T's that need to close the distance and get the bomb planted. Time is against them. And yeah, just checking everything. Good coverage of all these angles, really making it difficult for firepower. Big spray comes in. Oh, hello. There we go. Kaze gets one at the very least. Nice tag coming in. Eagle finishes it off from Moxie. So they will at least get two kills, which is an okay minimum. But it is a minimum with that investment. 
because the CTs are now ready to reclaim all the damage that was, or what, well, make up for all the damage that was done in this round. Unix stars seem seem ready. I like the off angles being played towards the uh, holding angles towards the Olaf position. So they will not be getting pre-fired in this round. Well, in the previous round. We'll see if 5 power adjusts when it's time to buy. It will be the numbers game. One flashbang. Nakez is there with the USP. Not getting much done. And Pong will look to clean things up. Hello. Goodbye. Speaking of goodbye. Okay, all of a sudden it's a 1 versus 2. What the hell's happened in this round? Infernal. It's got to be careful. 53 HP. Could take 55 from the Deagle. Q-Curl, 1 HP now. Could be killed by a flashbang. If he gets another kill, that would be genius. They may check... That someone might look from connector, so <laughs> he could... Oh, he's going to craze her. No. He's fine. Look at that. Down the ramp he goes. Very responsible. This full rotation is amazing. Do they hear this though? Doesn't look like they do. Infernal's heard him. Ah. Uh, or has he? Spex has gone into Pop Dog. Yeah, they've heard him. And there he goes. 1 HP. Do Res his best. Respect the attempt to yeah. like, get some something else out of that. They did well. I mean, they, again, like these rounds, they're somehow. Getting, they, they should not get any kills in these rounds, but they're managing to find them. They got three. So they got three kills there and two kills in the previous round. That's actually really good going. Because now the AKs are out. We can see that if Unique Stars lose this round, it's going to be pretty hard to... They, well, they won't have a full buy in the next round. So they've created a chance with that round. Have five power. Ouch. It's a nice start for the CTs. Although it did not last very long, did it? <laughs> oh no! Oh dear. This is really interesting. You know, Nurse is showing that he's up there with all those sound cues. Do five power. Yeah, I was going to say, Moxie, this is really awesome. Just pushing out into the A yard. Okay, he's got the spot there. If he wins this fight, that's huge. The bomb is now coming to the A bomb site. Kuker is looking to hunt down Nurse as he hears him run away. Oh, beautiful frag from Moxie. And Kuka might be able to catch one, go and connect. Oh, just misses him by a slither. That's plenty of info for his team. How does he close the distance, though? It seems that Nurse may have heard him jumping from train to train. Just waiting for it. The fla even the flashbang for his teammate, but not going to work out. Two versus two now. Moxie is heavily tagged. Nurse trying to get something done. And here is Specs coming in from the back. And now it's Kaze with the AWP. He has the angle. There is a Molotov, though, to force him from his position. Does he stand in the flames? He will burn in the flames. And that will be round number 11 for Unique Stars. The AWP, I'm sure, will be collected. Yeah, Spex has picked it up. And there is the round for Unique Stars. 8 to 11. They've been some difficult rounds for them, but it's 4 from 4 so far for the CT team. The bomb plant will allow 5 power to go pretty much for a force buy. And again, this is something that we've spoken about in the previous week. All rifles and very low on utility. Yeah, they were they were really close there. If, if one of those AWP shots connects at the end, probably a bit too tough to win that for Unique Stars. Not too many grenades indeed on these these T's that will make life quite difficult. Flash goes down, tries to face with it, discovers that there are two players there. There's even another one for support to offer up a defense from Ali. Long range, but no, it's... They are doing really well here. Uh, Unique Stars are holding Fire Power at bay. Oh, if only they had a Molotov to push Nurts back out of Pop Dog. Kazi would get the kill, but there's no nades left. One minute's mark. Three, five, two players remaining. No grenades. Got to walk into angles. Speaking of angles, Pont has his, but he loses. Maybe uh, that off angle is being expected now. Sometimes you've got to mix it up. A shadow scene. But it's Kaze spleen on the floor. Four rounds between the two sides now. And uh, the money is not there for five power. 
Unique Stars in a position to pull away late in the first map. Yeah, it's uh, it's not over to the server though, and although I, I would say that it, it has seemed a bit of a struggle for Firepower so far to get something going consistently on the T side, they had you know a couple rounds where they could get outside, and I think that's probably going to be the ticket for them to swing back. But nothing has been working really well for them. And these pistols are usually reliable for some damage. They're finding nothing in this round. Kazi, last man standing. Mr. Kong. Monsieur. Try and get everything possible out of this round. Any damage is good damage. It's a good $6,000 per person on this Unique Stars team. What do we talk about now? <laughs> well, he's about to die. Grim Reaper is coming Ooh. for him. How did he get a dink there? Just pap, pap. No bomb, unfortunately. No extra money for his team. Flank imminence. He can kill the flanker, perhaps. But a little bit too late to react to that. And that will be 13 rounds for Unique Stars. And soon, 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 they will be victorious. Three more rounds. A mere three more rounds, whereas an eight... Eight more rounds for Firepower looks a lot more difficult, especially because they haven't found a consistent approach to this T side just yet. They're struggling to get into positions where they can plant the bomb or or you know just generally trade out effectively. And this fast outside play could be the the way that they could do it, but you see the orbs on the angle. Now Kaze posts uh, post himself up on it as well, but it's too late. Oh, Infernal's gone straight for a flank from the B bomb site as well with four players in A. Specs with a nice headshot. I think the T side of training was always going to be difficult with this many stand-ins. And it continues to be so. Four versus three. Kuka spotting a player, sniffing something. Pox has been taken out. Infernal, does he commit to the flank here? He's got to do something quickly. There's a Molotov in pop dog for the time being. But look where the bomb is. That's a big frag from Kaze. Does he go for the... Oh, no, the smoke is down. Can't get anything. One versus one. Infernal could be anywhere. He has to assume he's coming from the B bomb site. But the longer this goes on, the more places he could come from. Kaze has a whole minute on the clock, though, to try and clear out some of these locations. When will Inferno start to get curious? Surely he will hear a weapon being picked up from where he's standing. He'll have an idea. Holding a super tight angle. Does Kaze plant back trains? Does he go towards B? Still 35 seconds for him to figure something out. Could Infernal be in connector? Infernal starting to wonder now. Starting to move around. Does he walk into connector as well? It's crazy that he's 100 health, 100 armor, and he's got four kills under his belt already. And then comes Infernal from the pop dog position, and Kazi's going to have an angle on this. Oh, this is brilliant. He's worked it out. He's got a great position. And there's some fantastic damage. Not touched a single time and gets all five kills to save his team in this round. That is phenomenal play. What a standout this man has been. That is huge. Holding his angles, trading. This is nice. That was a really nice frag. Then at the end, put himself in a position to win and he did so. Now, there is an opportunity for Five Power to break the money of Unique Stars, and then, then the catch up would really be on. Nurts quickly, carefully moving into the Pop Dog position. He will hear a lot of uh, sound towards the B bomb side, but no one's really in a position to rotate. Well, Attic is now coming through Connector. And there's Nurts picked off. Does that send Five Power back to A? No, they'll make their way into the B bomb site. Inferno with a two man spray down. The bomb is. On the Ooh. B bomb site, Kaze seems to have created or something. Yep. I think he might have mollied himself. I'm not, not sure which one it is, but Kuka, I think Ponked may have heard him rotating from underneath in the main position. But Kuka's gone out to A. 
The bomb's on B. But again, there is time on the clock here, so perhaps he can line up one, maybe two frags, and then he may really be on for it. He might hear Spex, who is still peeking him both ways. There we go, 50 HP now, Kuka. The last two plays will reposition. 48 seconds for him to do this. There is actually time, crazily enough. But he has to be very cognizant of the time. He can't walk out in everywhere. He's got to be forcing the action here because the CTs will never peek him. Or well, they shouldn't be peeking him. They should just set up for a trade and force him really deep. Make sure that he's really committed. He's got 20 seconds now to get that bomb and he will be eliminated. 14 rounds for Unique Stars. And after Kaze's heroic efforts, getting five kills and securing the round previous, now they get reset as a result. And Unique Stars are well positioned to make it happen. And indeed, the crater. Oh dear. So, a handful of utility. A few CZs. That's all they have to offer this round's five power, and they'll continue on towards Alley with those. It's been a forward smoke, however. This is going to be really tough for them. It's a pretty strong wow. start from Specs. Bad, Mr. Specs. Specs. Three pistols remain for five power to stave off game points. The next map is Mirage between these two sides. Ooh, Annika is just moving before taking the shot. Maybe doing the same once again. Stuck on a ladder now, but the cover is there. Specs is all over this round. Four kills for him. And then Ponk will get the last one. Game points for Unique Stars. Just the one round one in this half of five power. That was fun. Well, what do they have to offer? How much money is there? Not a whole lot. This is a, an awful buy for five power. They have enough smokes for an execute into DA site, but for the most part, they seem to be headed beyond the showers position. Will it be a B play, perhaps? Marquez going for that. It's repositioning. Looking to work the upper areas. Not sure if he's given his spot away already, but Inferno will come in. And that's a beautiful frag there. Just coming up uh, with the surprise. And then Anarquez also picks up the potential trade fragger for his teammate. So that's a quick 4v3 in favor of Unique Stars here. The Deagle is dropped as well. Kaze, he is the standout, but now he's he's been made to stand down. And it's up to Kuka. 1v4. Sure, it's not too bad. Okay, never mind. 16 to 9, the first map will go to Unique Stars. They played it well. 30 kills for Anarquez. Yeah, it's a very nice buy him, and um, I, I think that had to be a win for Unique Stars, especially when they moved to the CT side. Five power with so many stand ins on the T side of the train? I do not think so. Um, but, I mean, they had one or two opportunities here and there. If they got to 10 rounds, they probably would have broken the money of the CT side at the same time, and then who knows? But Unique won those important rounds towards the end there, and they will move to Mirage 1-0 up. We will see you back here after the break.